Good afternoon. It's Friday, January 13th, 2012. I'm Jamie Chadwick with your Erner Berry Market Report. Sponsored today by Erner Berry's Night at the Races 2012 at the New Meadowlands Racetrack on Friday, February 24th. First up today is a look at this week's currency report with Russ Barton. This week provided some wild price action as for the first time in quite a while we saw investors reacting to positive news out of the Eurozone while U.S. economic data failed to meet expectations. By far the most closely watched event up to Thursday was the short-term bond auctions of Italy and Spain. Italy managed to sell one-year bonds at half the yield of last month while Spain raised about double the funds that it anticipated. This news came on the heels of increasing unemployment claims and slow retail sales out of the U.S., which led to strong euro bids toward the end of the week. After falling to levels not seen sub since September of 2010 last week, the euro managed to gain over 1.4% against the dollar as of Thursday, strengthened by positive or perhaps a lack of negative news out of the euro. Strong price action was seen Thursday as short covering took place during the better than expected bond auction news. Long-term sentiment toward the euro crisis is still highly negative, therefore bar barring minor setbacks such as what was seen this week, the consensus is to the downside. Moving our attention to South America, the Chilean peso reached its strongest levels in two months Thursday. The combination of the aforementioned euro news, which spurred broad-based dollar sales, as well as a steady increase in copper prices led to the peso gaining 1.2% and breaking through the 500 pesos per dollar mark just between Wednesday and Thursday. However, in addition to these factors, Chile's central bank unexpectedly reduced their interest rate Thursday night a quarter point to 5%, which may pressure the exchange in the short term. Finally, the Australian dollar appreciated by nearly 2.3% among U.S. dollar weakness and the positive news out of Europe, reaching $1.038 early Thursday morning. The exchange remains in a downtrend, however, after significant consolidation since November. A spike up toward the 1.05 level is not out of the cards. As the premier risk reflecting exchange, however, the Aussie dollar is broadly expected to depreciate throughout the year as the Eurozone crisis worsens and the central bank considers lowering the interest rate to battle inflation. In the coming week, important economic events include the following. On Friday, the U.S. will release the November trade balance as well as the January University of Michigan confidence report. On Monday, we'll see China's fourth quarter real GDP figures. On Tuesday, the Eurozone and Great Britain CPI numbers. Wednesday, the New Zealand fourth quarter CPI and December Australian unemployment. Thursday, the U.S. CPI and European Central Bank monthly report. And finally, on Friday, the Canadian CPI and German producers prices figures. With this week's currency report, I'm Russell Barton. Thanks, Russ. Now let's check out the markets. In the egg market, retail demand is improving in all areas of the country as buyers feel more comfortable adding to their inventories. Increased feature activity is noted for the next several weeks. Supplies of all sizes are adequate to fully adequate for current needs, and the market is attempting to settle. Heavy breaking eggs are about unchanged as of this moment, but are lightly tested. Looking at poultry, the chicken market is winding down the week in a very stable environment. Wogs are about steady overall, and breasts and breast fronts continue to be asked for with limited availability noted. Cutlets and tenders are manageable, with the best call being tracked at the retail level. Dark meat lines are well supported, with legs, quarters, drums, and thighs trading in narrow ranges to our listed quotations. Talking Turkey bookings of whole birds for later next month and beyond are recorded at premium star quotations. Drums are moving better for export demand and the values paid are above those currently listed. Pressure on scapula is still evident based on willingness to discount, sometimes sharply, and the lack of response to those discounted offerings. Breast trim is in similar shape and breast meat is attempting to settle, but the undertone is still a soft one. Moving on over to red meats, the demand for box beef remains moderate to fair. Beef processors continue to discount their offering prices for end cuts, strip loins, and some isolated rib products. Ground beef asking prices are seen at reduced levels, with a few prices falling to levels below our printed quotations. Leaner boneless beef is rated steady to firmer this morning, and most participants are indicating that buying interest is active. Undertones for fresh 50s are mostly steady. In the imported beef market this morning, trading interest is spotty. There has been some effort to purchase Bun Cow 90s on the East Coast as traders ensure that they have enough product to meet upcoming needs, but very little has been transacted thus far. 
Now looking at pork, hams and trim are called mostly steady to possibly weaker as product is offered while demand is steady at best, both domestically and abroad. Bellies traded firmer late yesterday and are expected mostly steady today as processors assess needs among the new price action. Availability of fresh pork for immediate shipment appears to have cleared. However, the absence of significant export orders and the day-to-day -day buying pattern that has developed recently has plenty of meat available for the balance of the month. Last up today is a look at Erner Berry's HRI Buyer's Guide, which is a weekly publication dedicated to current commodity prices being paid to wholesalers and purveyors by hotels, restaurants, and institutions. Once again, here's Russ Barton with this week's price trends and movers for the food service industry. Our most impressive gainer this week resides in the beef complex. Thin meats, which include the skirt steaks, generally firm up when production is curtailed because they make up, make up such a small portion of the overall carcass. This generally occurs through the holiday season, which we are seeing now, and then continues through the winter months as production remains even. The last item in the green stems from the poultry market. Boneless, skinless chicken breasts advance this week under relatively limited levels of supply. Industry cutbacks certainly had a hand in play in this scenario. Moving over to the lamb complex, lamb square cut shoulders trended lower as demand was reportedly moderate at best. Supplies were reportedly more readily available. Finally, we turn to an item with the largest decline this week. Retail demand for large loose eggs has declined quickly since its peak around the holidays. With shell egg prices 10 cents higher than they averaged the previous five years during the month of December, producers were slow to make flock adjustments coming into the new year. Supplies of heavier sizes are long and with the market adjusting, buyers are taking a hand to mouth approach. Large whites are down 22% this week as a result, with further pressure noted in the near term. I'm Russ Barton with this week's Movers of the Week. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Russ. That wraps up Erner Berry's Market Report, brought to you today by Erner Berry's Night at the Races 2012 at the New Meadowlands Racetrack on Friday, February 24th. Whether this will be your first time joining us or have gathered with us before, this premier event has been a must-attend for the food service industry for years. Don't miss the opportunity to meet new contacts, enjoy the company of friends, and experience an all-new menu and chef. Contact us at 800-932-0617 or email marianne at earnerberry.com for tickets and info.